I've now added a few more fillets just to soften up my overall shape. Okay, I've got fillets underneath on all aspects, on all edges. And I've even added just a small fillet onto the bottom shape here. So, something that we need to do is we need to make sure that our main body is hollow and we want to add on our button. So, in that, what we need to do is use the shell tool. So, the shell tool hollows out objects. So, I'm going to hide part two. Don't need to see that now. And we're going to go on the top toolbar here and choose shell. And I'm going to choose hollow and pick the whole part. I'll make this two millimeters and we'll tick to accept. Okay, so this has now made my part hollow. So hopefully just to show you that, if I choose shaded with hidden edges and just zoom in now, Hopefully you can see with the white lines here that we've got hollow section, okay, something which is hollow. So now we've done that, what we should do is look at how we can cut the grooves in and how we can do a button. Now, the thing about modeling buttons are buttons are separate parts. Therefore, we need to create a hole for the button and then create a button. So, we're going to do a new sketch on the front plane again. So, this hopefully highlights now why we always try to sketch in the middle of our work, because we keep going back to those original planes. If I change the circle tool to an ellipse tool, what that's going to allow me to do is sketch an ellipse. Now, it's quite strange when you sketch an ellipse on how this works. If I just show you, I click once, once gives you starting point for the center of the ellipse. So now that you know that, if I move my cursor approximately to the middle of the ellipse and move out, what I want to do firstly is get an idea of the height of my ellipse. So let's say something like that. And then the second I've clicked, it then gives me a second point to move to where I can do the width. Okay. Now I've got my shape, I pressed escape. I can just change diameters if I want to, or I can move my shape. Okay, so what we want to do is just have a look at the measurements, just make sure that we get this right. So I can click and I could do the total height here, let's do 35, and I could do the total width, let's make that 11.5. Okay. I'm happy with that, so let's spin it round, let's extrude, sketch 10, and let's drag it all the way through our work and choose remove. So what that's going to do for us is leave a hole, but as you've seen, mine's on the wrong side. So I need to edit my sketch and make sure that I drag my arrow the correct way. Okay, there we go. There is my ellipse ready to create the button. And so what we'll do now, before creating the button, we'll do our vents here. So we'll do the, our vents in this instance fairly simple. Okay, there are two major modeling ways that we could do it. We could do a revolve or we could do an extrusion. Now in this instance, we're going to do a simple extrusion. You will, uh, later on, I will show you why and how we can use a revolve to get something that's actually more accurate and probably better. So I've drawn two rectangles. Let's dimension my rectangles now. So let's get the height. Five looks about correct. Let's do this one. Let's change that to be five also. Let's measure the gap between these two. Looks like that should be about five, okay, but I'm going to press escape and drag the bottom box down. Now we can see that that one comes too far down, so let's change that measurement to be six. It moves that up. Let's, we're going to round the edges here with a fillet, so I'm going to drag that to be bigger. I'm going to drag that one to be bigger, okay, and looking at that, I'm happy. So I'm going to accept, spin my work around into 3D. I'm going to extrude sketch 11 
I'm going to do that symmetrically, removing the material, and drag out. And you can see here are my air vents. And then I can zoom in. And if I use the fillet tool and pick the inner edge here, the inside edge, and spin round and pick that edge, we've got a nice rounded shape. Now, if you remember, we made the height of this 5. So if I make the radius 2.5, that gives me a circular end. Okay, like that. And let's zoom in. And get those two corner edges there. Let's accept that. And finally, let's put a very small radius, maybe 0.25. Let's see what it looks like. And if I pick this edge here, because I've got the curve edges now, it should put a radius all the way around my edge there, which it does. Looks tiny. So let's increase it to 0.5. Or if you wanted to, you could possibly go up to 1. Totally up to you. Okay. So we'll zoom out, zoom out. I'm just going to turn off my original scan sheet. Let's have a look at what we've done. And let's bring part two back. Okay, and there we can see that we've got a nice 3D model so far. So the next thing we're going to look at doing, we're going to create a button here by extruding to uh, a surface which we create. We're going to put a hole in the bottom ready for the whisk part.